All right, we'll bring the meeting to order with a, because you're you do it at 615, so we gotta make it quick, guy. <laughs> uh, well, the only things I really wanted to come for and show and talk to you is I'd like to make get the hooks notified about doing that bridge if if we're gonna have them do it. And we're getting the grant, aren't we? Or, yes, or we, we, already we, have got, we got it and we gotta get it done yeah. this summer. Yeah. Mike's here, yeah. And so uh I really want to be able to call him up and say, hey, let's go, because I uh I did get a price on the uh, uh box covert and it's actually close to 30,000 more than what hooks want for a real bridge. So yeah. I did get one. I finally got somebody to give me a price on putting that bridge in. That was uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Daniels. Yeah. The box cover, you mean? Yeah. yeah. And so there was no savings in that area. Yeah. And, but I needed to know and wanted to know. So we did that. Are you okay, John, with Rodney getting on the hooks and setting them on the bridge? I am okay. Do you want a motion? Well, Mike or just pulled in here, so you can make a motion. Well, I guess I could second the motion. I just can't make one. <laughs> I make that motion. All right. Well, I'll second it. Um, we'll let Mike come in first, and we'll tell him what's going on. Have a just when he comes in, just have a vote. You won't know what it's for. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just say yes. Rodney, why are why are box culverts so expensive? Well, it's a good question. I I uh, I uh, been told the bridge is considerably cheaper than uh, most people. One and only. <laughs> That's, uh, so I, I take it that's probably what it's all about. I didn't hear what you said, Rob. Is we're getting a good deal on the bridge. Oh, okay. So the, coal, the box COVID isn't that expensive, but we're getting a better deal on the bridge. Yeah, because uh, oh, I've, yeah. usually... I've been told that uh, the price was good, so we might as well go with it. Yeah. Um, Rod wants to get the okay to do the bridge up on... Um, but we're not, Kibble, Kibble, not yeah. doing the box over. Right. It's thirty thousand dollars more for the box over, he says, than doing the bridge. Oh yes, you told me that. Yeah. And so John yeah. has made a motion. Yeah. John made a motion yeah. without me. Yeah. How can that be? Because <laughs> you weren't here. Oh. And I seconded it because I can do that. <laughs> so if you're okay with that, yes, I am that. okay. All right. All in favor of said motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Carries. It was it was unfamiliar territory, Mike, for me to make a motion. Yeah. <laughs> we consulted a lawyer. Good thing you're sitting home, because <laughs> if you were out in public, it wouldn't be good. He said he's got Matt Loftus there as a second. So. Ooh. <laughs> anyway, what else you got, Ron? Well, I uh, need to get John Smith or somebody lined up to do the uh, Button Hill ditch project. Yeah. And so I would like to hand that one over to him that's what i'd like to do has he put in a quote on it or do we just yes have he's, he's got a he's got the bid here which was considerably cheaper than daniel's by half oh daniel's does ditching yeah oh i didn't know that and uh they oh, Daniel. daniel's, daniel's construction neil daniel's they're the ones that built the bridge, a covered bridge over here. And so uh, I figure we, because I'd like, I'd, I do have a project for uh, Matt to do if, if I get you folks to okay it. And I, I want to dig a deep ditch up there by the roundhouse down through to the bridge. Right, you said that, yeah. And then fill it back up with some big stone mm -hmm. and see if we can't drain it below, drain the road below the uh, area right in there to see if we can stop that every year mud right there. That's terrible, yeah. And so that's kind of why I have to try to. Was it bad for <clears> you, <throat> Everything's bad for me. Oh, come on. 
Well, I feel good. Yeah, well, it's paid. So <laughs> I can make a motion. I can make a motion that Matt Loftus digs a, a deep ditch. <laughs> <laughs> Give them flexibility. And then fill it in. And then fill it in. And fill it in. Right, second. I second it. He's right there. I guess he knows about it now. <laughs> Where is this? Is that what they want to do? Uh, On spring road. Okay. He won't do it tonight, though. No, but he's tired tonight. Um, but so we, we should pass him. We do a motion on the John Smith job. We should. Oh, I make a motion. We have Smith do the Button Hill ditching. Yeah, that's one of those grants, uh, yeah. Better Back Roads grant, I believe is one. Oh, yeah. Going. I second that. All right. All in favor of John Smith doing the job on Button Hill, please say aye. 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 Nobody opposed? What else? That. I think that's I'll the try. that's the four wheeler. This is this is fresh off the fresh off the press today. Fresh fresh off the press, yes. Is this for the four wheel drive replacement? Yes, uh, I. And I, this is just the truck, right? Yeah, just the truck chassis, no body, no nothing. Is this thing. is this pretty similar to the the Brookfield one, Rodney? Yeah, it's going to have that heavy front end in it. Right. Yes, it's pretty close. Uh, there's only there's only one thing. It might it may. We got a couple of months to uh, make a final, but we need to get on the board saying we want the truck. So we need to make a decision. But if we wanted to change something, we got in the truck. We got a couple of months that we could do that mm -hmm. because right this one sixty five. <laughs> 734 for a cabin chassis. Yeah. Six wheel. That's yeah. actually down just a little bit from the last one he Is gave it? me. Yeah, it's down by 3,000 bucks. Because uh, today I went over this with him. Yesterday I went over it with him. And uh, why do you need to rewire the diff lock switch? Uh, I, I wanted to go with the wiring that when it came out of the wherever, it didn't go through that computer, it went to these switches. So if you had a failure, you knew where to look for it. Right, you mentioned that before, maybe it was when we were talking at your house, sometimes you mentioned that, it's so smart. We, I took the strobes out and I took the work lights out and uh, the diff lock, I didn't realize we took out, but I don't have a problem with that being taken out. Yeah. <laughs> <That was bad. laughs> so, which glasses do you want to come on? The good one. 12,700 pounds front end. Huh. Oh, I was looking at total, total 18,000. You were asking what that. Yeah. That's that's all we want to go That's just that's what the cabin yes it is. Nine ten. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. It makes sense. And what what's the body package cost? Is that another hundred or yeah, hundred thousand? Yeah. Yeah. And you think it was like, too. I think that comes with a hundred. I think it's I think it's uh, Hundred and six thousand home and everything. Oh, a brand new home. Hmm. And I told them, as long as that rig was setting down there to their shop, that they might as well run outside and figure out what they're going to give us for it. <laughs> With a good front end in it or a bad front end? <laughs> well, we don't have much choice. Going to be going to be over a year before we see this truck. <laughs> we got to fix it. <laughs> So you want a motion? Where's it? Where's it say about the front end? The drive train. Uh, yeah, uh, drive train in here. I the the far as that piece of paper there goes, it's new to me. I haven't looked oh. that one over. Where's it say about the front end? I didn't look it over. I just printed it off. Does it have a? Rodney, just... what is this? A freight liner? Huh? Yes. 
Merriman Harrington, 16.557. I, I didn't hear you. Is it a freight liner? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 30,000 bucks for that front end. Apparently. Holy smoke. Okay. Um, but you, hopefully, you buy it once, not three, four we times. Hope, yeah. Yeah. We want to get more than one bid, or do we just go with what we want? I'd like to go with what we want. I know. I suppose <laughs> Well, I'm just asking you because yeah. I'm good. If you're good, if John's good, I'm okay there. Okay, Mariah, you okay? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and make a motion. We um buy a freight liner. Little cabin chassis from ATG Lebanon LLC for $165,734. I second it. They will give us something traded in, won't they? Can you get around? Yeah. Um, he, uh, he just put zero. I, uh, I didn't uh, look, keep track no matter what, it's zero, but uh, right. <laughs> but because uh, I, I I was quite disappointed with the with the hell the first one held up so nicely and the second one didn't didn't well, hold what up. What they say about that? Uh, they haven't really made as, any decision outside of they would look into it. My 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 real issue is it's uh, you know it's. Probably denied due to the fact it's two months over. Yeah. See, Robbie's pretty smart. See that? No. Seven years towing insurance. Yeah. <laughs> What's that cost? <laughs> that oh, only twelve hundred and sixty-five dollars. Yeah. What's it? What? What's it cost to tow it anyway? Oh, it's it's like seven hundred bucks. I was yeah. gonna say that's two towing. One towing. <laughs> yeah. If you can do it every week. Um, anyway, there's a motion made in a second to, to buy this freight runner truck. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, aye as well. How soon do we have to order the <clears throat> the package? Uh, I will get back with you on that. I I think you could actually order it tonight, but I, I don't have any paperwork. So, uh, but I know it's that close. But we we got we're looking at eight months or better before you even see a chassis. Yeah. Yeah, but we probably want to get our name in. Oh yeah. I sure mean I I in hopes because this brand new truck's coming and uh Larry's should be here at the end of the month. Really? Yeah. I don't and, uh, that will be roughly a year from when we ordered it. Mm -hmm. And oh, just the truck will be here. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I don't know how true true it is, but supposedly Freightliner has bought up two stalls with uh, 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 no um, Viking to service just the trucks they sell. Really? And uh, but nevertheless, that may or may not sound too good seeing that the state of Vermont bought a whole bunch of freight liners this year. Yeah. <laughs> um, how, how is Thomas's truck coming along? You said it's just sitting there. Are they gonna fix it? Uh, the they may have started on it today. The parts came in last Friday, so that's what they said that it could be the parts have been sitting there and they just didn't have time to get it in the door, anyhow. Mm -hmm. Um, so but they thought maybe they would get it in there last night. Now I don't know if they did or didn't, but uh, and it would take at least a day for them to put it back together. So, oh, it's that close to being done then? Yeah, all I gotta yeah. do is uh, 
put a new put the new gearbox into the front end pumpkin. What's it doing? Just rip out the pinning and ring gear or something? Uh, I, I, all I know is Thomas brought me over. He fed me a handful of bears. <laughs> Yeah. 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 And a couple pieces of race it. Yeah. You could see that they belonged in. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the but the housing itself is okay. They just got to replace everything in it. Yes. Yeah. And it, and it should be a lot less than last time because last time it needed because it was it had more the axle axles and the axles and all that stuff all needed to be replaced last time because it right. worn the sleeves so worn so the sleeves couldn't hold the oil back where it mm -hmm. belongs and uh so i wouldn't think those would be needing to be done up this time around yeah. so that right i just don't want to drive this truck i'm gonna have a force bolt 18 inch leather wrap steering wheel with chrome switch I love the leather steering wheel. Put a chrome switch. <laughs> What's the switch for? Switch, bezel. <laughs> Can you adjust the radio on the steering wheel? Like on a super. Not that I know. <laughs> hmm. I'd like to request the transfer. Let me get the highway <laughs> department. Yeah. Maybe Rodney trade with you. Yeah. You're probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we're trading in. Go ahead, John. We're trading in Larry's truck when we take possession of the new one. Yes. But how does that work? They just give us a quote, and then you know, if the truck's worth far less than it was, you know, when they, we need give us a very high one. When they give us that quote, they have already figured it's going to be two years older when they when we when they take it so they make the figures already for two years later wow it's a futures quote <laughs> <laughs> huh. it used to be a lot quicker than that but it ain't no more yeah i hope they don't lose money on it <laughs> <laughs> um but everything else is going okay yeah, I just talking to Larry just a few minutes ago before I came over here, and he said yeah. everything went pretty much like clockwork today. Good. They did a little grading here and there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I did all that. <laughs> 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 uh, that's all I got for you, but I just wanted to get here and get these things ironed out so we can get them moving. Good. You're going to post the road soon? Uh, the plan is Thursday they will uh, work on putting the mm -hmm. posters up. Uh, it's supposed to be good weather and that uh, they can put them up. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, mud season will be over with by then, but I got this doubtful feeling. Roger Hill said they were supposed to get another one of these in a week, in seven days. Well, according to the uh, weatherman, that the next one, next northeast, is going to be all rain. So we'll see. And that comes on Friday. Yeah, we'll see. All right, I can't think of anything more. You, John? Oh, yeah. did, did we figure out how to maybe not have all that heavy sap cross the Flint Bridge? No. <laughs> we haven't been able to figure out how to get a handle on that. Yeah. Is I that, can you post the bridge? Or they'll still go across or is it because it's agricultural? What? Already posted. It is. Has he got ag plates on or? Yes. He's got ag plates on his truck. He can't, sure can't do nothing. Do that. Yeah. Well, well, ag, ag has an exemption no matter what the weight for going over covered bridges. Man, that seems unlikely. Go anywhere they want, can't they? <laughs> well, well I, look I, up I Sprugs, I've seen Sprague's pull that manure spreader up the East Hill, and you could watch a road go right into the ditch when they're <laughs> pulling that spreader up to it. Yeah, but there's probably not an awful lot of difference between weights of that yellow one and that uh, truck. What's that? Uh, yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of a, 
you know, how, 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 how do you say want no to somebody and yes to another? <laughs> um, is there a bridge engineer looked at the bridge, yeah. Flint Bridge, or going oh, to? Yeah, it wasn't. Do you know? I haven't heard they've done it. Last time we had checked, they hadn't gone out. All right. But well, that's yet to happen then this spring sometime. Uh, it needed to happen quickly because we've got a 415 deadline for the grant submission. Supposed to be getting out there. Oh, okay. So that'll happen in the next week or two, for sure. I mean, I'd hate to. Uh, I mean, I, I guess I wouldn't hate to. But that, that money is money, one way or the other. But uh, uh, we can either lie and have the siding done with it, and nothing else. Or if there's other things that need to be done, that's why the state man is supposed to go look at it. Right. Well, I'd like to keep that but structurally, just so if a heavy truck or a mm -hmm. bus or whatever goes through the bridge, it doesn't go through the bridge, so. It, uh, if we do anything with the with the siding, I guess it just wasn't a big big deal. But if we do anything with structural work, they, they are going to want us to use somebody who is, uh, which is fine with me. I think it's a great idea to do that, uh, but that won't be cheap. So that's why we need want to use up as much of the grant as I possibly could. Right. But uh, when it comes to the structural work of it, they and, and the state is involved with a the grant, they need to uh, tell you who's going to do it. Yeah. Actually, that's a little bit of a lie. They they will tell you who, who you can have do it, and then you can pick one of those. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I just want to get that one straight. <laughs> Okay, if that's all you got. Um, probably oh, probably the grants. <laughs> that? I was just gonna say that that grant Marianne was looking into is probably based on structural work, right? Yeah, it's the structured grant. Yep. But they're willing to do the siding with it, but we just want to be able to maximize the grants up to like a hundred and Two hundred thousand dollars. So, and the siding only came in at like thirty thousand or something. So, we would like to go for more structural repairs. Yeah, Forty-four, but thank you. But, uh, but the other one that we was looking at, Bill Daniels, was sixty-five. So, every everything they came out and looked at is is considerably high compared to the people that tend to us. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. Rodney's going to exit. Thanks, Rodney. Yeah. I got to get it. Maybe sure not. Right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you'll go without his jacket. Ah, <laughs> oh, I'm getting so sick of this. <laughs> the wind's blowing from the wrong direction. <laughs> when, <laughs> when are you going to get your cast off? I I two weeks. Two weeks. Good. Two weeks. And then what do you then? A couple months of PT. Well, they're going to have to do something because. Uh, you know, I don't have an awful lot right there. Yeah, well, yeah. you're right. You won't so for a while. Trying to lift my arm up to you know, play more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it ain't it work. <laughs> yeah. All right. See you later. Thank you. Thank you. Next. So Harry's next. Six fifteen. We're only fifteen minutes late. <laughs> That works. Um, and this is Mike Hi, this yeah. is Watch your mission. How you doing? Good. Um, thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Um, all set. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, hopefully this is good for everybody. Um, I'll try to keep this brief because I know you have other things in the agenda, and we got snow piling up outside in the meantime. Um, so I'm here to give you sort of a high level overview on MERP. Uh, the Municipal Energy Resilience Program, kind of a funny sounding acronym for a big ARPA funded program that, you know, can do a lot of good work in the state of Vermont and hopefully hopefully in Tunbridge as well. So I have this quick presentation talking about the, the high level of the program. Um, there's three different grant opportunities available through the program that I'll run you through real quick. Talk about the eligibility requirements, what buildings might be eligible for the program. 
uh, a little bit of uh, Tumbridge specific information, uh, and then I'll tell you about the timeline and, and what you can do now to get your get your ducks in a row, basically, uh, to position yourself to compete for the grants. And Harry, just yeah. um, when you said ARPA, you mean the state ARPA dollars. So you're not talking about our local ARPA dollars, which we're designating. You're talking Correct. about a different yeah. sex of money. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, so uh, MERP is a $45 million program that, uh, whose funds ultimately come from ARPA. Um, it was established by Act 172 of last year, and it's just sort of getting rolling now. Um, the ultimate goal of the program is to reduce uh, town greenhouse gases while helping towns save money on heating and cooling the municipal buildings. Um, and the centerpiece of the program that everybody is really excited about is this uh, uh, implementation grant program of up to $500,000 each to do uh, weatherization work on town owned buildings. So uh, we'll give you a little bit more detail about that in a second. Um, so the first part of the program is what they're calling the community capacity building mini grants. Uh, those are entirely optional to participate in the other parts of the program, the energy building energy assessments and the project grants. Um, so the mini grants are only up to $4,000 a piece, uh, hence the name. Uh, those applications just opened in this past week on town meeting day, um, and those are intended to be used for uh, outreach and education on uh, energy projects and climate change resilience at the town level. Um, so towns that have energy committees have been really interested in this because it means they can use those funds to uh, have public meetings and, and, and engagement on the different projects that they're working on. Um, there's a couple of different suggested uses for that, which I'll outline quickly in a minute here. Um, but moving into the sort of meat of the program, uh, we have the municipal building energy assessments, um, which are exactly what they sound like. So uh, getting your town buildings uh, assessed for uh, what work could potentially be done on them for weatherization and insulation and um, fuel switching for your heating and cooling needs. Um, two different levels of assessments that you can apply for uh, through MERP. Um, I'll talk about the differences in those two levels uh, in a minute, but they're uh, both free to the town. Um, they're just sort of tailored towards uh, different needs that you might have. So I'll, I'll talk about that more in a second. Uh, and then the big marquee program is the project implementation grant. So those are up to $500,000 each. Um, that section of the program alone uh, has $36 million in funding. So we're talking a minimum of 72 grants statewide. So a lot of work is going to be done under this program. Um, any municipal entity except for a school district can apply for that. Um, so what we're what we're essentially looking at is um, the act ties eligibility to the building's ownership. So if if a building is owned by the town of Tunbridge or by an incorporated village or uh, incorporated fire districts, any of those buildings would be eligible. It's not really tied to use. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, doesn't really matter what the building is used for as long as it's something that's owned by the town. So that leaves some leeway for you know, like community centers, recreation centers, some yeah. less typical things that towns might have. Um, those applications are not open yet. Um, we're, looking at uh, likely early 2024 for those applications. So this, this part of the program has a little bit of a longer horizon. Um, and I don't think I mentioned the, the assessment phase. Uh, those applications are supposed to open this spring. So most likely uh, sometime next month. Um, and those have to be conducted under statute before January 15th of 2024. So it's gonna, they're gonna have to hit the ground running on the assessments. Once those applications open, they all have to be done within nine months. So it's going to be, that phase is going to be pretty quick. Um, the implementation grants have a little bit of a longer horizon, but I'll, I'll give you the specifics in a second on that. Um, the community capacity building mini grants, um, these are not competitive at all. Um, so the state has said that any town that applies for these uh, will receive one as long as they apply for a qualified use. Um, I'll give you some examples in a second of what a qualified use would be. Um, there's really no deadline on that. They encourage towns to kind of take their time, talk to residents, talk to town officials and talk about what you could potentially use it for. There's no rush. In other words, um, it's uh, not required again to apply to the other two MERP opportunities. So this is just kind of like an added bonus you might want to consider if you have some potential uh, public engagement activities or education or outreach that on energy issues that you think uh, you might want to use this for. 
Um, the only caveat really is that it can't be used directly for capital projects. So you can't use it to buy light bulbs to do uh, you know efficiency projects and things like that, which is kind of a bummer because a lot of towns are interested in that kind of thing. And with this amount of money, uh, there's not a lot of you know capital things that you can do besides something like that. So, but unfortunately, that's not uh, an eligible use. Um, the main suggested use that the state has is to start a local energy committee. So to conduct public outreach to get people excited about having a local energy committee um, and you know solicit and get get the ball rolling on that. Um, they suggest uh, setting out mailers to uh, let residents know about energy efficiency programs for uh, homes that are available at the state and federal level um, for weatherization, fuel switching, rebates for uh, purchasing a new furnace or heat pump or that kind of thing. Um, it can also be used to hire consultants to apply for uh, uh, grant programs for energy related projects. So if there's something that Merck doesn't cover, you can use the mini grant to hire either T Rourke or some other uh, consultancy to spend some time to uh, apply for other grants to supplement that. I know that may not be as much of an issue for Tumbridge since you do have a grants administrator. Um, but that's just another example of something you can use it for. Um, the assessments. So um, you can apply for multiple buildings. Uh, the state has said what they'd like to do is to be able to have enough money to give every town at least one assessment. Um, so they may ask you to prioritize your top one or two buildings, and only those may end up getting an, uh, an assessment. Uh, there's no dollar award limit on the actual amount that each assessment will receive. Um, it's just coming from a $5 million pot of money. Mm -hmm. They'll they'll keep awarding them until that $5 million is exhausted. And this is like an energy audit or whatever? To it is essentially the same thing as an energy audit. It's going to be a little more comprehensive and cover a few more things than typical energy a walkthrough energy audit would do. Mm -hmm. So normally they'd walk through, they'd say, they'd sort of identify what just on a visual level, what kind of fuel are you using for your heating? How old is the system, et cetera, et cetera? Is there no insulation? Are there obvious issues with uh, mm -hmm. weatherproofing or you know leaky windows, that kind of thing? Um, the MERP audits will also include uh, giving you a, a, a scope of work and a cost estimate and a timeline for what work can be done and the sort of cost benefit of what can be done. And it's also going to look at um, the potential for uh, putting EV charging on site and also uh, putting renewable energy generation on site. That's a bit of a tricky thing because the project grants can't actually be used to build those things. So mm -hmm. the last two things, it's really the project grants are really about the really high priority things like the building envelope, insulation and uh, fuel switching. But if they give a suggestion, we can always have Marianne give it. Exactly. So you'll questions. it's it's really meant to be completely comprehensive. So mm -hmm. if you want to do those sort of added extra things, you can move forward and pursue other funding sources for that. But, you know, the project grant scope is really about just like making sure the building is is sound and performing yeah. as well as it can. Um, so, yeah, the state is going to contract the vendors centrally, so you don't have to deal with any sort of billing or, you know, management of, uh, you know, handling the vendors and that kind of thing, coordinating with them. Um, they've told us specifically, don't call the energy assessments grants, because if you say grants, towns are going to say, oh, we have all this you know, reporting requirements and stuff like yeah. that to deal with. The energy assessments are meant to be as, as painless as possible. Um, we at t -Rourke will coordinate with the town and the contractors to actually handle the logistics of when will they come in and be able to access the building, mm -hmm. et cetera. And you shouldn't have to deal with any billing related to that because it is handled directly by a state contract. Um, two different uh, levels of assessments are going to be available. The level one I have highlighted here because that's all you need in order to go on to apply for a project grant. Um, and that's basically your standard walkthrough audit. They say it's only going to take about an hour and a half, and it's going to be identifying uh, fuel sources, potential for weatherization improvements, fuel switching, um, you know, potential problems with the building envelope. And then again, that feasibility of battery storage, EV charging, and on-site renewable generation. Um, so that's all that's needed for to apply for the MERC project grants. If you're interested in maybe applying for loan financing to carry out some of these energy projects down the road, um, they're also offering what they're calling a level two assessment or a investment grade assessment. 
Um, that's going to be a longer, more involved process. They're going to bring in all the fancy stuff, the infrared cameras. They'll they'll do a, a blower door test, that kind of thing, to see what the air loss in the building is. Um, and they're and that's necessary for loan financing and other things like that because they want to be able to ensure that the town can pay back the loan with the savings that are garnered from from the energy work that's done. Um, so it's kind of like a financialized version of the level one. Um, and Harry, do you want yeah. to speak to, so we did energy audits and right. I sent them along with the quotes from right. George White to Harry, but ours are not sufficient. So do you want to explain to them? Yeah. So I assume that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't actually have to have a um, MERP audit in order to qualify for the MERP project grants. You just have to have a compliant audit that ticks all the boxes on what the statute says needs to be in the audit. So if you have a third party audit, it can either partially or completely cover um, you know, the audit requirement that goes goes towards MERP. It just has to tick all these boxes. Oh. Um, and I don't remember. So did you ours have a... didn't tick the last two, the EV charging okay. and the um, renewable energy. And that was pretty energy. recent, right? It was from 21. 21. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So as long as it's in uh, within the last five years, they will accept whatever count, whatever <laughs> boxes it takes. Um, so it's looking like you would probably only have to apply for a MERP audit to yeah. take off these last few things and make sure that um, the audit that you already have uh, includes everything that's described in the in the statute. So the scope of work, yeah. the cost estimate, et cetera. So it's just too bad to, to do it again if we've already done enough to. Sure. I mean, some towns have asked, can we, you know, pay out of pocket for to to finish a partial audit that we've already had and then use our, our you know, apply for a MERP audit on a different building? And as far as we know, there's no reason you can't do that. And then you can apply for uh, the assessment grant for either one of those buildings going forward. But mm. um, so something to think about. Um, they say neither neither of these uh, will have any cost to the town, um, and it should be a unified application. You just took whether you want a level one or a level two. Okay. The level two does require some more paperwork, uh, again, because they want to make sure that they'll recoup the investment on on the loan. Um, so it's going to require whatever utility bills you have for the building um, and any you know construction documents from, you know, if you have the building's blueprints, I'm guessing it's probably pretty unlikely for a building that's well, yeah, like 1891, yeah. but um, from any renovations or if there are any uh, plans from you know previous mm -hmm. previous work or previous audits um and so we get to the big <laughs> the big part of the pro uh, program which is the project implementation grants again that's a total pot of money of 36 million dollars uh five 500 up to five hundred thousand dollars for each grant so bare minimum of 72 grants throughout the state if not every town needs all five hundred thousand it could be even more than that yeah um it can stack with other ARPA funded grants and it can also be used as local match for uh, other grants. Um, through some accounting wizardry at the state level, they've figured out a way that this counts as local money essentially. So if you get another grant that you need to stack with MERP to get the work done on whatever building uh, you win the grant for, um, the, the MERP award will count as your local match. So that's very kind of exciting, mm -hmm. I think. Um, Eligible work weatherization, so building building envelope stuff, shoring up the building and making a weatherproof vapor barrier, crack ceiling, uh, insulating around the foundation, all that kind of stuff. Uh, insulation within the building, uh, fuel switching, upgrading hot water systems and heating plants. Um, so all of that core stuff, it can't be used again for the EV charging or the power generation. Um, the town eligibility requirements, uh, again, it, any building that's owned by town government, corporated village government, or fire district, et cetera, basically has to be an incorporated public entity. That's kind of the definition that they're working with. Almost anything except a school district um, qualifies as that. Um, no matter who applies for the grant, obviously you as the select board will have to sign on to a grant agreement if you win either the mini grant or the project implementation grant. So, uh, you know, we need to, with a lot of times, we've needed to make sure that the energy committee is talking to the select board and yada, mm -hmm. yada, but it seems like there's very good coordination here. Um, there's a broadband requirement under the statute that it seems like we're we're very confident that Tunbridge meets their requirements, so I'm not too worried about that for you. Um, 
the grants are going to be awarded based on a series of sort of weighted criteria. The most important piece of criteria is the town's energy burden level. Um, and the statute points towards uh, this report from Efficiency Vermont as defining the energy burden level. And basically what it is, is it's a measure of how much of your residents' household income do they spend on uh, energy. So that includes home heating, electric, and transportation gas, basically, a year as a percentage. Um, it's obviously not the best measure of how much does the town government spend on heating town buildings, but it's the best information that they thought they had to work with in the General Assembly. So it's what we've got. Uh, and our hands are kind of tied by this metric because it's what's in the law, but um, it's kind of used <clears throat> as a proxy for the town government's energy spending. Um, buildings, eligible building, again, anything owned by a covered municipality. Um, so is Tunbridge eligible as a town? Yes, you meet the uh, broadband requirement. We're very confident in that. Your energy burden level is classified as low by Efficiency Vermont, but that by no means means that you shouldn't consider applying to the program anyway, because again, it's a whole series of weighted criteria. That's yeah. just the biggest one. It also considers uh, geographical location, population, and a few other things. So they're really making a conscious effort with this program to spread the money geographically around the state mm -hmm. and give it a big towns and give it its tiny towns. Yeah. So enough people complained in the General Assembly that Chittenden County was getting enough, uh, way too much grant money, and they've they've baked it into this law that yeah. they need to really spread it around. So there could be other factors besides the energy burden that make you a competitive applicant. And again, there's going to be a lot of projects that get grants. So we're encouraging it every time it's interested to go forward and submit an application mm -hmm. because you never know who else is in the pool and you could still yeah. be very competitive. Um, which buildings are eligible? This is just based on my high level survey of our towns and, and what I could determine the ownership to be for the buildings. Uh, it's looking like town hall, town offices, town garage should all be free and clear to apply. Uh, seems pretty straightforward that those are owned by the town government. Libraries are a little uh, less clear about this because, as you may know, some a lot of libraries are owned by uh, incorporated, you know, like nonprofits and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting some more clarity from the state um, in the near future, hopefully, about where, what, uh, which libraries are going to be eligible for that. Um, because technically, a lot of those are private nonprofits; uh, they're not the incorporated public uh, corporation that they're they're pointing towards in the statute, but. So we're going to get some more information about that. If you're, I don't know what your library's ownership situation is. Uh, does anyone we own know off the top of your head? Yeah, <laughs> we own the building. Okay. Well, we, we and we own the that that brick part there. Okay. But the, the, all the rest of it's been built on since. So I don't know what goes on there, and I don't know what they have a board of trustees and all that stuff. So they they probably are their own entity somehow, but they. Like I said, the statute, it really just defines yeah. it, it. Eligibility is defined by the ownership of the building. So whoever's on yeah. the deed, if the town's on the deed, you're good. It yeah. doesn't matter if it's governed by a private nonprofit, yeah. what, what have you. you yeah. All right. Um, there's also a separate, I think I talked to you about the library's capital projects grant. So there's actually a separate ARPA funded project from the state uh, program from the State Department of Libraries that has $26.4 million for uh uh, infrastructure improvements for public libraries yeah and we're getting more information about that um, over the next few months and again because uh Merck is able to stack with other ARPA grants uh there's a huge opportunity for public libraries to get some some serious money um by stacking those two things together so that's something that we at t -Work are keeping aware of uh as we get more guidance on how how that uh grant program is going to work Good. fire stations similar thing to libraries of course a lot of Fire stations that are actually owned directly by the town. They're owned by volunteer fire yeah. departments or other incorporated entities like that. So if you're interested in uh, applying for the, your fire station, we'll, we'll have to figure out the ownership situation there. Uh, and again, we're getting some more guidance from the state coming down the pipe to figure out how to handle those. Um, these are just a couple of potential obstacles I want to flag to the towns, uh, just so everyone is aware what you might be getting into with some of these projects. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't, again, we don't think this should discourage anyone necessarily from applying, but it may affect your strategy of which buildings you're interested in uh, in applying for. Um, town broadband clause, again, you guys were pretty confident that you're, you satisfy the requirement. Um, on the building level, 
the statute does require that any building uh, that wins a project grant is ADA compliant by the completion of the project. Um, what exactly that means, legally speaking, is uh, a matter of some debate, I'll put it that way. So there's a lot of uh, conversation happening between uh, the RPCs and the state to try to figure out what exactly that means in practice. Does the building have to be fully ADA compliant as if it's new construction, or does it have to be ADA compliant the way that existing buildings are normally made ADA right. compliant? You know, it's based on what you do to the building, uh, the level of compliance you have to have. So we're getting more clarity on that. I will keep you apprised if there are concerns about that. Um, there are also some supplemental funding opportunities that can be used specifically for ADA, uh, including uh, the library's capital project grants. So again, that obviously only applies specifically to libraries, but so we can we can talk about strategies to 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 fund that work if if, if we uh, if it comes to that. Um, historical clearance, um, we're getting again. These are all things that we're just kind of in conversation with the state on. They're not; they haven't finalized how the project grants are going to be handled. And again, they're they're a little ways out, so we're not going to be applying to these things until January of twenty four. Um, but we're trying to get some more clarity on how historical buildings are going to be handled under this and uh, toxic remediation. So we we do know for sure that um, MERP is not going to fund toxic remediation. And obviously, that's a huge concern for towns when we're talking about older buildings like this. Is there lead paint? Is there asbestos? Is there vermiculite? Is there et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, more guidance is forthcoming on how exactly we should handle that. And we can talk about finding supplemental funding opportunities. The only thing we know for sure is that Merck isn't going to fund that directly. Um, but again, just something to be aware of as we move into the project grant phase, potentially. Um, finally, this is one of my last things. So. The Act 172 also establishes a municipal energy loan program uh, that they're calling the Municipal Energy Revolving Fund. It's going to have an initial balance of $2.8 million. Uh, the state government is really not uh, focusing on this at the moment because they're just trying to get the mini grants and the assessments mm -hmm. out the door at the moment. Um, but if this is something you're potentially interested in, uh, put a pin in and, and I can keep you up to date on any more information that we get about this as they roll it out. Um, we don't have any information just yet on what the dollar limit on these loans is going to be exactly or how it's going to work. Um, but it is just another avenue for funding the type of work that Merck is going to fund. So energy infrastructure improvements. Um, yeah, I think that's about all there is to say about that at the moment. It, it will require one of those level two audits because it is a loan program, yeah. but it will be a, a low interest loan. We don't know much about the, the terms beyond that. Timeline, again, those audit apps, look, look for those to open later this spring, most likely April or May. Um, the audits are all gonna be performed between then and um, January 15th of 2024. Mm -hmm. um, the project grants are then gonna open in early 2024. Um, and then once they're, once the application phase starts, it's actually a pretty generous timeline for how long you have to actually complete the project. Uh, the statute says that all the project funds have to be expended by the end of 2026. So that's pretty good. And then we've got until the end of 2028 to fully wrap up any project mm -hmm. work um, related to, you know, Merck project grants. So pretty generous once we get into that phase. Um, the next steps that we're pointing to for town. So start having conversations about mini grants. Again, there's no rush on that necessarily because it's not competitive. But if you have something that you think would be a good use of the funds, uh, start having conversations about um, what you'd like to apply for. And I can facilitate uh, an application for Tembridge. Um, probably develop a list of priorities about which buildings you'd like to be audited based mm -hmm. on need and eligibility, um, because they are probably going to ask you to choose one or two buildings to get the assessment, at least initially, if they had money left over, they might do two. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um they might they might just do one for the first round if they still have money left over, solicit a second round of applications. We're not positive how that's going to work yet, but they're going to make you say what which buildings are your highest priority. Um Again, pull as much documentation as you can about the buildings and find out as much as you can. Um, this is just going to help flag potential issues, especially with you know toxics and ADA, just, just to help us see these things from far down the road so yeah. we know what we're dealing with. Obviously, information is power when you're talking about old buildings like this. Um, 
And yeah, if you are interested in loan financing or the level two energy audits, just be aware that you're going to have to get those utility bills out and any blueprints or things like that. Um, and yeah, any uh, any other questions about the program? Happy to just open it up. Not sure if we uh, went over time there, but. No, that's fine. Okay. We're flexible. And is this, Marianne, separate from what we've been talking about before? So. Yes. Yeah. Sure yeah, separate from our ARPA dollars. Yeah. Yes. I know it's a lot to digest, and there's still a lot of unanswered questions uh, at the moment from, you know, in terms of state guidance, especially yeah. about the, the project grants. But we wanted to just, you know, lay out the whole program as early as possible so you start yeah. thinking about what you can get done. And even if you don't ultimately end up winning a project grant, there's definitely some alternative funding sources that we can point you towards. And we may not necessarily have the funding to help you with it. Luckily, you have the grants administrator. Right. You know. I mean, it sounds like with Mary Ann's coordination, mm -hmm. we could get a lot done, potentially. Yeah. Yeah. So when Harry and I talked last Friday, we talked about maybe targeting the level two yeah. uh, assessments, just because if we're not a high priority on the efficiency Vermont report, if we don't happen to get one of these grants right. and we want to try to go for the funding or we want to try to go for another program, we probably want the most comprehensive assessment. That's what I would say. Yeah. <laughs> and I would think even for the little $4,000 grant, maybe Todd Tyson and Whoever um, on the energy committee would jump on something like that. Yeah, is Todd on? So I sent him all of that info. Okay, he was hoping to join tonight, but I did send him all the info that Harry sent me. I forwarded it on. Yeah. So, but um, it was good to hear tonight that there is no real deadline. Those are just rolling. Mm -hmm. So Todd doesn't. I know he's he's. Um, they're working on some. The public radio has a major major capital funding campaign oh, right yeah. now. So yeah. that's taking his priority at the moment. Yeah. But anyway, I think he would jump on something like that. Yeah. Fred Pond had a little circle, but doesn't have a little hand up. So I guess Fred doesn't want to say anything. So. And if the folks on Zoom don't have a copy of the slides, I'm happy to forward that to anyone who needs it. Yeah. Sorry about the lack of. I can you put a copy with I, the minutes, yeah. right? Yeah, I can post them. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, I, can you go over the, the sort of waiting again, Harry? You know, just like what's a sort of project or could you help us, you know, sort of identify like this, this project probably has the best success of, you know, by the weighting system of, of winning, a, winning one of these MERP grants. Sure. So the, yeah, the, the weighting system for, uh, so again, this, the exact way that they're going to implement this isn't exactly, isn't defined yet. Um, all we know is what's in the statute. Um, it's based on the town. It's not based on the building. Um, so it's going to be energy burden level, uh, geographic location, uh, community size, so population, and the community's capacity to uh, secure funding from other sources. So essentially, uh, how much does the town need the money? Um, uh, I think that is actually the second highest weighted criteria. Um, so on a building level, I don't think there's necessarily anything in the statute or any criteria that we know of just now that would say, you know, the, the town hall in Tunbridge is, is, is going to be a more appealing application than the town offices, for example. Um, we only know how it's going to be judged on a town level, if that makes sense. Yeah, and there's, there's not much we can do then at a town level to change our chances. I mean, it's really data um, where we're at right now. At least in terms of the things that are defined in statute, yeah, it's it's pretty prescribed, I'd say. But again, we can talk about even if you don't end up winning a project grant, we can talk about other funding opportunities. If you do go through with the level two assessments. Uh, which of course qualify you for loan financing. There's a very interesting program through the Vermont Bond Bank, which I'm not sure if anyone is uh, aware of, um, called the uh, the pooled pooled projects loan program, I believe, um, and that is essentially a, a loan program for energy retrofits and efficiency upgrades for public buildings. Um, so I was recently made aware of that, and that's a very interesting alternative 
opportunity for financing these exact type of projects. Yeah, I mean, it, for us as a board, I mean, it, it'd be interesting if, if, you know, if we could just focus on one thing, like, you know, if we're going to retrofit the town garage, if, if we're thinking of that now, you know, in the next two years, everything we do moves towards that as opposed to thinking, let's just hope we get something to do a job here <laughs> there. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. if it's things we might have to do anyway like a loan or or a bond for retrofitting or building you know part of a new garage <clears throat> that would be really helpful so yeah like i said the state the state has said that they'd love to give every town at least one assessment so that's how they're going to approach the assessment judging the assessment applications um so maybe what you want to do is think about which which building has the highest overall need and apply that for an assessment. And then once you're armed with that information, you can go forward and apply for MERP and any other relevant funding opportunities to, to get that work done and, and focus on one thing in that way. Yep. Well, that's helpful. Anything else? No, I don't have any questions. Anyone else have a question? About you. Oh, I'm good. No, you're satisfied. How about Fred Pond, do you have any questions? I always like to talk, Fred. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> no questions, Fred? I have no questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> you better be. No. Fred lives in Barrie. He's right outside that. He, he looks like he's out in the tundra somewhere or something. <laughs> I'm on the couch, yeah, a real tundra. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I guess that's it. If, if Fred right. has no good question, we got to have a conversation. So, yeah, we're still in the early days. I'm going to keep coordinating with Marianne yeah. and then let you know as the different parts roll out. We'll keep you up, as up to date as we can on yeah, everything. Yeah, pretty exciting. Yeah. yeah. Lots of money floating around out there. We'd, yeah. we'd like to position our towns to take as best advantage right. of that as they can. Well, I, I, a few years ago, we were talking about just the amount of oil we buy for this building in the town hall and just it right. goes out through the windows and everything else. And I hate right. that. And so this is really exciting about maybe we'll get this building and the other one's tightened up. So we're way more energy efficient. Yeah, I mean, that's a, a huge impetus for a lot of towns to be interested in the program is your t how, how big is Tunbridge population? 1,300. 1300. So a town of 1,300. That I'm sure one of your biggest line items on your budget is heating the town yeah. buildings, right? Yeah. So yeah, huge, huge way to kind of kill two birds with one stone yeah. here. Yeah. And plus, I mean, there nobody lives here or anything like that. Right. People work here during the day, but at night it's pretty vacant. Right. So it's too bad to heat it for nothing. Exactly. <laughs> and Mariah can stop wearing her jacket at work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I did notice you put that on right it's in the middle. Right? <laughs> Trying to make him feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, our town has need. Yeah. yeah. Look. <laughs> when I come in the office in the morning, like Judy has the thermostat set. So at night, it like goes down to like 50 or something. Yeah. So I go in over there at 61 degrees in the morning. Yeah. I leave my coat on until like about 11 till it's warmed up. It takes that long. Yeah, it takes a long time. Ice on the floor. I know. Oh, <laughs> That's because she keeps her house at 85 all the time. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> that was the one of the things when I told Devin we were getting, when Devin wanted to get the wood boiler, I said, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to wear a t-shirt and shorts all winter long. And he said, that's fine. You can. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you do, except for when you go out and feed the furnace. <laughs> You're right. I don't feed the furnace. Yeah, he does. That's right. Good deal. <laughs> one time my grandmother told me. The more that you show them you can do, the more you have to do. Yeah. So, don't do that. that <laughs> I did. He said, she lays on the couch. <laughs> With Fred. That's what Fred's doing now. He's setting a good example. They look similar to Fred. Yes. That's Mariah's <laughs> motto for administrative assistant. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be careful, yep. Mariah. We'll have you doing all sorts of things. I know, I know. Water? There's strawberries in there. No, and Fred. Fred was drinking something. Oh, was he? Yeah. Mike said he lost 
10 pounds already from his strawberry cucumber water. And gave him all the, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. You do. I've got, I've got fresh cucumbers. I could go get some. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Harry. Thank you, Harry. Uh, so before we move Thanks, on, I'll tell you two things. Yes. Um, Mike might know this one already, but the first one is I literally submitted on whatever day it was, Thursday of last week or Tuesday of last week for the um, the Flood Resilient Communities Fund for the purchasing of Putnam Meadow. Uh -huh. And then Gail, the who is the one who has it listed, let me know Monday morning that the seller accepted an offer over the weekend. So oh. if that goes through, it's currently under contract. It's not officially sold yet, but it is, mm -hmm. he did accept an offer and it's under contract. So if that goes through, then obviously our, our grant for the flood resilient communities will be pulled back because yeah. they'll leave nothing to obviously, buy. Yeah. So. This money has slipped between the cup and the left on the real estate. <laughs> so. Uh, so that's the first one. And then the other one that you had just asked me to check into last time we met, um, was the Belknap Bridge funds that hadn't come through yet. Yeah. And I spoke to Mike Blaisley this morning, Blakesley this morning, and um, he said we should have our check within two weeks. Nice. It's been processed. Good. It's just Thank you in the system. That. Yeah. So, so that's 192,000 yeah. plus some change. <laughs> plus the change. I'll take the change. <laughs> yeah. um, I think those are the two major updates. Yeah. Thank you. And then we have the, we have, Two grants that are due April 15th. One's already been submitted, but the other one is the structures grant that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. oh, and Rita just emailed me and said that she's going to call Chris at the Chris Bump at the state again tomorrow because they've not gotten the bridge engineer out there yet. Yeah, they need to. They need to. So I was scheduled. That's what I thought. Yeah. A week or two ago to go there. That's what I thought. I, I mean, I was surprised it wasn't done already. So. Yeah, I think Rita had reached out to them to have it done. And when I just messaged her, she said it's not been done. So yeah. she's going to call Chris tomorrow and see what's the holdup. Yeah. So, All right. I think that's it. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Keep your eye on a lot of money floating down there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Maria. Give it to Becky. They never give me the money. You don't see it. You don't get it. How that work? Does it come yeah. <laughs> All right. Next on the agenda says noise ordinance. Your noise ordinance is in your packet, ready for your approval. Are you here about the noise ordinance? No, I'm not. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is this the same it's printed last time? It is. Yeah. I, the only thing I did was I had added in the um, sections and oh yeah, um, yeah at the top and just finished a couple sentences that needed to be yeah. finished. Have you seen a copy of this noise ordinance, John? Not not recently. I think I remember reading it long ago. But um, so what's the process? I was just thinking. You know, one one good exercise for us would be to think of, as we do in the legislature, you know, think of all the unintended con consequences. Yes. If we pass this. Um, the as, legislature as, does that? You really do that, John? <laughs> <laughs> well, four people out of 150, but, <laughs> um, you know, just so we don't get in a pickle or, or tick somebody off who's been doing the same thing right well that, that i haven't read it i haven't read this in a, in a little bit of a little while but the thing i liked about it was the fact that you can you can um you can make a little bit of noise like if you shoot your gun yeah it's okay but you can't shoot it a hundred times every day or or if your dog barks at a skunk walking by or something that's okay but your dog can't bark 12 hours a day nonstop. Right. I'll be written up. Right. <laughs> but that's what I liked about it. That it, it didn't get over over burdensome that way. Yeah. And even here, like we, we talked about, like on Friday, Saturday, and special holidays, New Year's Eve and Fourth of July, the hours between 1 a.m. and 7 a.m. are unreasonable. So like right. you know, you can't be super loud at two in the morning, but yeah. you can at eleven thirty at night. Yeah. 1255. Exactly. Yeah, I just want people to be reasonable. 
I mean, they don't want to leave someone to be riding a dirt bike around at two o'clock in the morning on Sunday or something. And yeah. then as far as as far as enforcement goes, or you know, if there was a, a hearing on our part to hear both sides, you know, if it was neighbor versus neighbor, who's who's the jury on judge and jury on that stuff? Uh, I think you guess. It isn't listed, so I don't think you see it. It has authority. The owner, oh, no, that's different. There's a, there's a penalty. Any court of competent jurisdiction. Let me read you the last one. The last one. I don't know what that means. John. <coughs> I don't know. No. Any what, court what is it? Competent jurisdiction. What is that? What's what's that preferencing? Should, should any court of competent jurisdiction determine any provision of this ordinance oh. to be invalid? Oh, I don't get oh, that. that. I think I think that's if someone challenges the ordinance, right? But, yeah. Yes. Same. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't read the whole thing. But the ordinance is it's complaint driven, right? So you know, if yeah. you have two neighbors and one says, Oh, my neighbor's being too loud with shooting or music or I think, it, I think yeah, I think that it's kind of just like with our dog ordinance and stuff too, that like, you know, it would be brought to you guys, you would we'd write a letter and say. You can't ride your dirt bike at two o'clock in the morning. You know, if, if it happens again, you can get a fine at the fines, you know, up to a thousand dollars, not to exceed that. You could set a, a, an amount. Then if it happened again, you know, we talk about it again. And then I think at that point, then it would be like, you know, a sheriff matter type of thing. Like we have an ordinance, we've contacted them multiple times and you know, they know that they're not following the ordinance. We've given fines and here's, you know. Yeah. At some level, it, it rises to a law enforcement issue. Right. But do we have any law enforcement? Yeah. No, but we, can, we need a constable. That's what Fred could do. <laughs> constable Fred. He looks sort of like a mountain. Right. <laughs> we, we could get him a gun and one bullet. Yeah. <laughs> right. It might be worth asking the SP, you know, if they've enforced noise ordinances or how that works, you know, because if it's, if someone's shooting, for example, you know, unless you're there listening to them or you have a decibel testing thing, you know, just how that works. If it's sort of one person's, complaint versus another person who's claiming that it's not that bad or they didn't do it or what that sort of thing you know because who was just telling me about atvs in south royalton but i guess they asked chief loretta and she said you know unless i'm there there's not much i can do you know if somebody's riding an atv on the road they're not supposed to be on the wing use patch or something like that and catch a three horse I caught most of that. Yeah. Please. Oh, sorry, my breaking up. Oh, really? A little bit, not bad. <clears throat> no, I was just, I was just saying that. I think to enforce these things, probably like a lot of other ordinances, is is pretty hard for law enforcement. Yeah. You know, unless you actually catch them in the act. Like, you know, Gary, if you had a complaint about someone using Jake breaks every morning, you know, at 3 a.m., you know, you'd have to get the police there <clears throat> to do a test or, you know, actually cure it themselves or something like that. Otherwise, it's it's just, you know, one person's word against another. Right. But I think it, like Mariah said earlier, if we get a complaint that somebody's dog barking or whatever, then then we, the select board, would have Mariah write a letter to the person, and hopefully that plus this ordinance and the possible fine of a thousand dollars would make them make their dog stop barking or 
or make their, but whatever. <laughs> I mean, that's my angle anyway. Yeah. I hope it doesn't get to the fact that, that a police officer has to go and look into it. Yeah. So this is our public hearing part. Yeah, Correct. so I just have it. I was reading through the LTC stuff. Um, you have to vote to adopt it, and it has to be entered in the minutes. Then once you adopt it, I will place it in five places around town and on the website. <laughs> and then I will post about it in the newspaper. And then as long as there is no... Um, if, as long as nobody comes to petition it within 44 day, days of tonight, then it will be adopted 60 days from the receipt of, 60 days from us approving it tonight. Gotcha. So yes, we should be all set. All right. Does someone want to use it? crash before 6 30 a.m. over in West Cumberland. Really? Yeah. As a general rule or because we gotta get over these buffalo before they wake up. Yeah. <laughs> um I make a motion that we accept this um as it's written. The noise ordinance? The noise ordinance. Ordinance for the regulation of noise. Mariah? Yes. Do you know what happened? How how would we amend this? You know, either add to it or, or edit it, subtract from it. Do we have um, to go through the whole thing again? or? Is... Yeah, the same thing. So if we wanted to amend it or repeal it, we would have to have it on the agenda again, the no, you know, noise ordinance, amendment, approval, uh, whatever. And then... Um, it would be entered into the minutes and then I'd have to place it out again and then it would have to go in the newspaper again. It would be the whole thing again. It's possible. I mean, it's not super hard. We would just have to just document it. Right. Okay, well, we had a motion made. Is there a second? Um. And one more thing. So was this based on a VLCT noise ordinance or some other towns? It was um, it was in other towns. Yeah, I, I used a couple different towns and I kind of fit it to fit Tunbridge. Yeah. OK. All right. I second it. All right. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor of. of um, of the noise ordinance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? You then. This is the addition. Well, How comes nobody ever wants to give us a grant to put a gas station in Tumbridge? There's one in North Tumbridge. I was going to say, there's one in North Tumbridge. You want a real gas station with a ding yeah. ding bell and everything? You want a Valera? No, I just want, you know, to pull in every electric car and charge oh, up your okay. folks to be able to pull in and fill your tank. So you think? It'd be kind of handy. Yeah. I think John better look into that. <laughs> what am I looking into? We sign up. Uh, Mike wants a, a gas station here in town. <laughs> <laughs> It's electric car, he can plug it in here. And then if he drives his pickup that, that produces, uh, that, that uses gasoline, he can also fill it up with gasoline. He probably refer, he wants a gas station in West Tunbridge. Yeah. Does, does, does East Bethel have an, an EV station for Mike and his Rivian? Does, he, does East Bethel have an EV station? No, not yet. So the electric cars are piling up there, though. <laughs> Running out of battery storage there. 
I had a pickup one time. They're just plugging them in now. I can only drive a couple of them. Put a round cord. <laughs> yeah, snap the cord out. <laughs> Oh man, you got to pick up one. Well, it took forever to fill it up with gasoline. It was about like plugging your car in and having oh, it charge. Thing was crank. Yeah, something was going on. Other business. Oh, were we going to uh, do the appointments tonight, or do we have to have that on the agenda? Uh, let's put it on the agenda. I'll do it. For, we can do it for next. How about election those select board officers? That's I think that should probably be on the agenda too. How about I sent you a whole bunch of things? I know, but you did it after I had already sent the agenda, so I didn't. Okay, what do you want? Yeah, I have it for next time, the the appointment of the select board stuff. And then next time, we also have to have an answer for Karen Blow. Oh, about the horse thing? Yeah. Um, my personal opinion is we said we weren't going to have any organized events. And yep. I think it. we ought to stick with it because if we let her go, then we got to let bicycles and four wheelers mm -hmm. and everybody else. That's my that's my opinion. It seems like there must be a way to get. Yes, yeah, gotta be to bypass the legal trail on yeah. on the Mister. His name's Land Hemingway. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't understand where they're going, but um, but there's got to be a way around it. Well, yeah, and, and if also we we need to, I guess, basically be consistent yes. and stick with our guns. Yes. If we aren't going to allow anything but yes. walkers, then we need to allow nothing but walkers. Well, and we said no. I mean, yeah. one of our things was we said no organized event. Yeah. I guess even if they were walkers, if there was right. 5,000 walkers going through on a rainy day, they right. could make a mess too. Right. We could be in on that 5,000 walkers. So I wonder what, what happens if it's a, it's a town right away, but if the landowner approves of essentially an event on their land, which in this case is exactly the same path as the town right away. I wonder how that works. I mean, we... Right. You know, I can see on Orchard Trail, you know, with different landowners, you might not get consensus there, but in... Cal Hemingway's case, right? If, if if he said it was fine, and then Angels or <clears throat> Beatrices or somebody else said it's fine, I wonder how that works. I guess I could ask them. And... Yep, I'm not quite sure. Uh, it's the same I, kind I of thing where 10, 10 feet to the side of the right of way, Cal Hemingway could say, "Yep, use my land, have a hundred <laughs> horses ride right over it." Not no reason why I couldn't do that. I, I got an opinion on this, if you're interested. Speak up, John. Um, you know, one of the things I discovered that, in looking at the statutes is there's this peculiar provision. This doesn't directly address your question, but it's part of the answer is that talking about um, logging on trails. Um, and there's a provision that says you can put you can bring logging equipment onto trails. The owner can bring logging equipment onto trails, uh, maybe under certain circumstances and subject to certain limitations. But simply having logging equipment on a trail in order to do logging is not impermissible. Um, I guess my view more generally would be that um, that the town uh, uh, determines uses, um, but it's the landowner's land. Uh, and if a landowner wants to allow other uses on their land, they can allow other uses on the land. Um, so that would mean for, you know, for from time to time, we've taken um, farm equipment out the orchard trail to get to one of the pastures. And I think that's lawful. I think it would, I think the landowner's uses of, of their land where the, 
where the trail is would be subject to the limitation that the landowner's activities couldn't unreasonably interfere with the public uses, um, couldn't unreasonably impede, adversely affect them. But subject to that limitation, uh, I would think that the landowner would have an unlimited right to allow uses um, of their land. <laughs> But that's just, I mean, that's free legal advice. <laughs> yeah, thank you, you. You're getting what you pay for here. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, I think that's probably consistent. But whether if, if we said, you know, no events and, and that's what this means. And then a landowner does the exact opposite and says, I'm, I'm good with this event, you know, on that. Right. Could I allow, could I allow Karen Blow? I mean, I've allowed Karen Blow to go up to White Rock. I mean, we've never talked about her going up down the Orchard Trail, but we've, but could I allow her to go up the, um, up the Orchard Trail? That's your question. If you right. didn't allow it. And I think the question would be whether that, uh, uh, my technical answer would be yes. Not that it would be likely to happen, but um, the technical answer would be yes, so long as it, it were not determined to unreasonably interfere with the public uses of the trail, the designated public uses. Hmm. Or, or be detrimental to the trail itself. Well, that would be this. That would that would be that would be why it would yeah that would yeah de detrimental to the trail in a way that would interfere with the public uses. Right, yeah. Hmm. Well, I'll ask uh, legislative council if there's any, any clarity on that. Okay. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah, we should get back to Karen, I guess. Could you have an answer for us in two weeks, John? Yeah. Two weeks time? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. And we still got to keep working, right, to figure out Falls Hill. So the cows, you know, by when we said right. May 30th or something, but solution for them. Hopefully, all of them. When are we going to go over the applications, the ARPA applications? next time yeah whenever you guys want to or start them anyway we probably ought to at least i mean i read them all over but that was a month ago and i don't remember anything about them now i can read them again um is there a huge amount for next meeting or do you know uh the only thing that i have next time is the appointments for you guys um get back to karen blow and that was it well that's Let's at least talk about that. Start the process of the ARPA applications. Yeah. Oh, the TQ is due. Oh, yeah. Is it due tomorrow? Yeah. I'm not going <laughs> to <laughs> forgot about that. <laughs> Any highlights? I guess, I guess town meeting. Yeah. Um, what else? But we, we ordered the truck. Yeah. Part of it. Rodney's on the man. Marianne's, Marianne's reeling in the grants. Yep. Mud season um, is upon us. Winter's yep. still with us. Yep. Um, I mean, there wasn't really anything controversial at town meeting, was there? Or no. Except for when Mariah got wound up and almost choked to death on the cords and stuff. That's right. I almost face planted on the stage. Good, so. good catch. <laughs> you can write about oh. that. <laughs> Your graceful AA. Yeah. We need we need video though for that. So. <laughs> I luckily the owl wasn't uh, turning around and getting that. So. <laughs> or at least it's still. Where was the owl? 
It was in front of the um, podium because I had to have it plugged into the computer and I was typing on the computer. So it was like okay. not super far. So there is there's a recording, but it's sort of <clears throat> it's blurry and in the background, you can see a, a figure <laughs> trip. And... Yeah. <laughs> um what else what any news from the town nurse is she healed uh, no. oh can we um you know she had a baby right no town I nurse didn't. no oh you didn't know that no oh yeah she's just been secretly pregnant she just had a baby a couple weeks ago really? I didn't yeah. know that. Well, she ain't big enough to be secretly <laughs> pregnant yeah was it a broken wing or is that wing? No, no, it's broken. But yeah. she was like, and she was in the office the other day and she's like, yeah. And I'm like 38 weeks pregnant. I said, what is this? <laughs> when? So, and then wow. she's like, yeah. So she's had she said, baby. it's a secret. Yeah. What that the TQ? It won't be a secret anymore. <laughs> Let me see if I have a picture. <laughs> it's a boy. Yeah. It's a boy. And Erica Houston had a little girl. Yeah, here's that's her. right. Yes, a little bundle of joy. <clears throat> I saw it on the sign as I passed the store. It was a girl. Yeah, Erica had a girl. Yeah, Marguerite. Marguerite. Um, did we start having? um committees and stuff report to us again we used to do that before the COVID. yeah i mean i don't know if it's a big deal or not but no it's um, probably a good idea and, yeah and nice to hear from them before town meeting and also yeah. like the trustees for public funds you know if they want to apply before the end of the fiscal year you know, if there was leftover money or something, just so they, they got thinking about it would be a good thing. Or be ready for next year. Because I remember June, the end mm -hmm. of June was kind of a deadline time in past years we've had. Yeah. And, and oh. for us too, right? So your job is going to be to contact, you know, different rep department, everybody, and have them come in, you know, kind of stagger them along and have them come in once in a while. I can do this. Mm -hmm. And speak to us. Um, I did want to talk to you guys. We, last year, we were awarded a grant for the transfer station. It's $5,000. We had applied for it to do something with that like a container for recycling. Mm -hmm. We were kind of up in the air. Well, it's getting down to like the year mark where like we have to have the stuff in. So what do we want to do? Do we want to- Can get... we build a dock? <laughs> I, I, yeah, so uh, I don't know what you guys want. When I had originally applied for it, it was for signage. So I'm not going to have Janet Zug print out some bigger mm -hmm. final signs about what we would take and what we don't take for recycling. I think that's really important. Yeah. That's still yeah. important. And then, but that's going to be like only a couple hundred dollars. So, you know, we're going to have like $4,500 left over. Did we want to purchase a other container? Or did we want to rent a container and put some of that money towards that? What are you thinking? Or do you just want me to say, the only thing I used was the $300 <laughs> for the signs. Thank you. And yeah. here's my receipts. <laughs> but what about Mike Howe's? work on that on the deck dock thing i can ask if if the grant would cover that um because when i had originally applied i specifically had set a, a container to help with the overflow of recycling and that's what we were approved for so i can ask and see if it would be able to be changed over for you know work on the dock access. But, yeah or access access container yeah it wasn't mike's well, like two thousand dollars or something. It was. I don't remember that. Yeah, I think, I think it was. Hundred or something like that. So that would go a long way toward. The okay. 5, 
Okay. I will I'll ask on that. And on the safety side, I mean, anything, even if we got an electrician who said, this, this is the design you should follow to you know, make this a safe, reliable system, if we had, say, 2,000 left over, would be great. Mm -hmm. You know, essentially yeah. like a scoping step. <laughs> what, <laughs> what we have now and where we should be going. Sure, it'll cost more than that to rewire it, but oh yeah. man, I bet but, it will. But it'd be nice to have just right up, you know, a state engineer, somebody say like, "Boy, this is a mess," and you know, this is what we would recommend. <laughs> Good luck on that. Seems like nobody wants to yeah. do it right. I know. We could use a MERP grant for, for building a new hut there. <laughs> That's a town of building. <laughs> Make sure it's energy efficient. That's right. Well, the nicest transfer station hut. Uh, oh, anyway, back to signage. I think we really, it'd be advantageous to us to, to make some nice, good, mm -hmm. clear mm -hmm. signs there. Just because of that mess we had last fall with, with what's his name, throwing garbage into the recycling and stuff and just, I don't know what to do, but yeah. make it as clear as possible. Yeah. Make yeah. it idiot proof. <clears throat> then at least do you want to come up with some, do you want to come up with some sample sign language and then show it to us because yeah. yeah i think it's worth, worth for us you know even like you know you could say this is what we accept but but even things like you know confused or don't understand ask the transfer station attendant you know just so we don't have people thinking i, I i'm pretty sure they take grain bags <laughs> let's just throw them in right there. okay yeah, like you're saying, make it idiot proof, Gary. <laughs> and also, you know, there's things like even suggestions, like try to, you know, you can put somewhere, say, try to bring less more often rather than more every two months yeah, in one big go. Fred Pond has his little hand up. Fred. I, uh, you probably thought of this already, but whatever our contractor is for our recycling, is it Casella or Myers or? Casella. Casella. Um, that they, they are motivated to receive valid recycling. So I would think they'd have some templates for what we oh. take and we don't take. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. That's a great idea, Fred. Well, and sense for solid waste management too. Right, right, right. And you right. know, Fred, the thing is, those two, like, they don't always talk or agree. So, like, I, I swear nobody really knows, like, what recycling, you know, I remember talking to Bert. He was like, no, you can't put black plastic in there, even though, you know, like, the, the pots that, like, apple, little apple saplings, you know, by, you buy at the nursery or the tomato plants, those black plastics, say, like, number two, but he... He said that, you know, Casella rejected those. <laughs> well, that's right. There's no, there's no black, black containers aren't, can't be read by the uh, recycling machinery. It's black plastic cannot be recycled in the state of Vermont. Um, right. So not only those plant container things, but those tops of your coffee that you, your to-go cup. Yeah. yeah. Bottoms of those, you know, to-go meals like that. I yell at myself yep. every time when I forget, um, and then I send I send that out to New Hampshire. I send it home with friends from New Hampshire. <laughs> I thought he sent, he sent the video. He sent the video of Fred yelling at Fred and sent that little clip to, New, <laughs> to friends from New Hampshire. So don't go to Fred's house. <laughs> If you do, stuck with a book of black yeah. plastic. <laughs> Come to my house, just don't bring black plastic and expect to 
recycle it. <laughs> Did you stuff old tires and stuff in people's cars when they go to New Hampshire too? <laughs> no, Gary. I pay for my tire recycling, just like everything else did, instead of dumping them over Falls Hill Road. Well, that's that's the West Country. Oh. <laughs> they can't get to New Hampshire from West Country, so they have to throw them over a bank. I'm never going to Fred's house, I'll tell you <laughs> that. Yeah. Oh, Mike. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> um, any other business, Fred? What are you doing later on? Are you just going to stay on the couch all night? Oh, I think I'll turn on the Apple TV. I got some free movies to watch. Nice. Mariah's going to be watching Oak Island. See if they dig something up there. My favorite channel. Oh, <laughs> never dig anything up <laughs> somehow mud a lot of mud no you could have matt loftus go and dig a big bitch there didn't they get a coin yeah. once <laughs> a lot of, uh, and a little piece of chain mariah knows every bit every I'll little item they it. we'll get together over coffee one day okay. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> all right my parents are obsessed with it so <laughs> there you go Mariah, when do you put the agenda together usually? Just because I know I'm forgetting a couple things here. Thursdays. Thursday before Thursdays the Tuesday. Before yeah, because okay. I'll, I'll submit it Thursday before I leave. And then it'll be there for Friday for the um, Jeff. Jeff will normally post it by Friday and then that'll be the five days. Yeah, okay. You have to write up your town clerk TQ entry as you watch Oak Island. I know. You go with those dictators. <laughs> and until we'll you just talk into it and it just does it automatically. Right here on this computer. Yeah. yeah. I just click it up. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Yeah. All right. If no one has any other business. Well, you were supposed to yes. the warrants. We don't have any. So you have to get oh. approval. Oh, okay, that's right. Explain that. Oh, and I you. haven't done the minute. Um, so Becky, um, I had texted her this morning because we didn't have power here at the town offices. Yeah. So she didn't come down off the hill, so she didn't have time to print warrants. So she's going to print warrants tomorrow, okay. and then so if you can like approve Gary to stop in and sign them, then he can do that. I'll make them all. Should we make Gary a push up? Stop him and sign them. I second it. I got my mouth full. Okay, all in favor of me stopping in tomorrow and signing the warrants, say aye. 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 So I'll do that. And those just need signatures. Those are all the ones that John had gone through and we approved, and those I just fix them and they just need a signature now so I can record them in your selectman's book. Do you want Mike and I to sign them all? Yes. Okay. Please. Do you have the new minutes from last meeting? I don't. Um, I will have that for the next one. I will have the next group of them. Okay. And then we should all be right. caught. And then we'll be back to every meeting. What, what, where, where did we get to Mariah? The ones that you have approved through and that are getting signed tonight are yeah. through um, December. So now you're okay. on to January of 23. We didn't have an early January meeting? No, I'm saying January 2023. Oh, I get it. Yeah. yeah. So if I start from there. Yeah. And they're all online. Them online. Okay. Gotcha. Then I'll do those. Okay. And then I'll have the um, town meeting minutes. Um, oh, right. And all of that yeah. as well. Okay. They're done. They're typed. I just have, I need to print it off. Don't they have to be approved within so many days of town meeting or something? Yeah. So I will, I can print them right now and you guys can read them. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
<clears throat> Give me something to do while I'm doing Look at the line. Well, Fred, what movies are you going to watch tonight? I don't know. But am I? Yeah, here I am. No, I don't know, Gary, but I, I've been talking about a town forest meeting tomorrow night, but I don't think we have enough people to make yeah, it. I got, that. I got that email. So let's try to do it next week. Yeah. And um, Dave Kimball is out of town until late that next Wednesday. So might want to bump it another a day, maybe to Thursday. Okay. So Dave can uh, participate. Just send out another email. Another email. Yeah. Did you take part in Brenda's brush burning yesterday? No, I, uh, on Sunday. No, I was, I had other plans. You know, I didn't get a note and, and I was up in actually up in Crassbury at the outdoor ski center having some really nice Nordic skiing. Yeah. Good for you. Warm sun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was a nice day Saturday. Yeah. Nice beautiful. Sunday. Just one coffee for me. Yeah. Do you okay. want one too, Mike? Uh, many minutes. We just signing them or no, reading them? I'm just gonna look them over. For tonight or for next? Next we're gonna we're gonna okay them next meeting. How come I can't have a coffee? Oh, you can. I just want to take them home so I can. Yeah. I'll put the draft. I'll put the draft online. <laughs> At least yeah. it's up there. This is just. Oh, that's a good idea. This is just too exciting for me, so I'm gonna hang up. Uh, thank you for <laughs> this all. See you next. Thank time. you for attending, Fred. All right. I hope you watch a five-star movie. Uh -huh. <laughs> Maybe you find start saving movie. our black plastic for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's going to be now Fred Black Plastic Fun. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. <laughs> See you later. Oh, he's gone now. He's gone. All right. Should we adjourn? Yeah. Oh. We can adjourn. Mike and I are going to sign these uh, minutes that have been approved. We'll get that out of the way. Okay. We'll go home. I make a motion we adjourn. I second that. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Huh? All right. Thank you, John. All right. Yeah, I may send over a draft of the TQ, but I better let Janet know that I'm not going to get to it tonight. <laughs> We'll get the standard extension. Yeah, exactly. All right. Thanks, guys. See ya. Yeah, yep. See ya.